The basic understanding of grids inside of your web and UI design projects can only get you so far before you have to start mastering the advanced usage of grids. Responsive grids, eight point grids, four point grids, baseline grids, how you use it in your typography, icon design, as well as your layouts for web and UI design. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of advanced grid techniques, and by the time you're done, you are gonna be the grid master. Ooh, grid master, that sounds exciting. All right, let's dive in. We'll talk about some advanced grid techniques. The first thing we're gonna identify is the basics. In your basic grid, you have a 12 column grid. You've probably heard of that one. You drop down to tablet or mobile, you have less columns, but usually the grid is a column grid and it's made up of these three main components. These are the basics. The grid column that will actually contain the content. Then you have the gutters, which are the spaces in between the columns. They literally just keep the content separate or give you areas to line things up against. And then you also have the margins. That's the space between the content and the edges of the screen. So you have the columns, the gutters, and the margins. Those are the basics in a nutshell. But the question becomes, how do you actually implement or create one of these? Well, I'm gonna move over here to a blank part of my canvas. I'm gonna turn everything back on inside of Figma. I'm gonna hit A for artboard or frames. I'm gonna drop a new frame on my canvas. Now to create a grid or a layout inside of your project, you're gonna want you have your frame or artboard selected. Come over to layout grid, turn it on, and we can choose between a grid, columns, and rows. Let's start with columns and boom. There you have your immediate column layout or your grid that's been created for you. Now, you're gonna wanna know the hot command or the quick key for whatever program you're in. For me here on a Mac inside of Figma, it's Control G to turn them on or off. It's gonna be a very helpful thing as you're designing your layouts. All right, now Figma offers a lot of options uh, inside of those layouts on how you can actually place them, manipulate them, and lay them out. When we're creating this basic column layout, we're gonna drill down on it. You can see that this one is using a six column layout, but there again are a lot of options. I can change the color to my grid if I want. Maybe I wanna change this to more of a blue color. I can do that and my grid has changed. Um, I can change the opacity of that grid and make it darker or lighter. I can also change the type of grid that we are establishing. Is it center aligned? Is it butted up against the left, ignoring that left-hand margin to the right? Or is it stretching? We can also dictate the width of those columns. Usually when we are talking about width, we're talking about the width of the columns. Let's drill back in there and check it out. And so we can jump up or down the width of the columns. Do we wanna offset it at all? And then what are the size of our gutters? So very, very customizable as we're building all of our grids and layouts. Now the layout that I have here on top, our grid is set to be in the center. And that means when I stretch my frame, this could be the frame for your website or your mobile application, that grid is gonna stay in the center, keeping kind of a maximum width, you might say. But you can also set your grids to stretch and that will make them responsive grids. In that case, when I set this one to stretch, as you can see right here, when I stretch my artboard, this could be again, my website or my mobile application to dictate different device sizes or screen resolutions, the grid is going to size up and Figma is gonna do all that work just natively on the fly for me. Now you can also skip doing your grids all together and then you can just apply something called constraints on all the individual elements. So we're actually kind of setting up a grid here on each one of these and you'll see that they, they're all set to scale. So as I start to move my artboard around, we're kind of getting those grid lines established, but you can see how powerful it would be to set up multiple grids. In this case, we have a row grid and we also have a three column vertical grid and we have our elements also set up uh, so that they stretch. And you can see as those elements are stretching, they are dialed in, they're locked in to the actual column grid that's been created, all right? Now, these are not in an auto layout. They're, it's not some sort of fancy trick. I can move them around, and if I do that, they're gonna go ahead and stretch here. But by establishing those grids, we get some native snapping inside of Figma, as well as most other design tools. And now we can have a responsive grid. And you can imagine how this could work for responsive 
cards or layout elements inside of whatever you're building. Next up, let's talk about baseline grids. This has become very popular in modern UI and web design because it's a really flexible way to accommodate designs across a lot of different screens. Now, this does not have any sort of column layout or row layout, but instead it's going to utilize that grid layout that we saw when we were applying our initial grid or setup and the most common way to do this is to set up what's called an eight pixel grid sometimes people will set those pixel grids to four but it's something that is divisible by four rarely will people go up to 16 it's usually four or eight now the reason that four and eight happen to be the magic number is because a lot of things are divisible by four or eight it just works really really well as a guiding principle for your mobile tablet and desktop so here we can see that our eight pixel grid has been established when we open up our layout we can see those details here it's a size of eight again we can move that up to be something like 16 but we can set all the same kind of constraints here inside of our grid the color and the opacity but this works out really great for us because we have some sort of iconography or a button here that is set to 56 by 56 that is divisible by four so we zoom in you can see that it is lined up on those grid lines so we start to establish a lot of rhyme and reason and structure based off of this grid. Now you can see how this is gonna come into play in this next example. We have elements that are on this eight pixel grid and some of those smaller elements are gonna line up maybe just four pixels away instead of the full eight. But now we are really taking advantage of that eight pixel system and we're really locking things in to a lot of structure and a lot of governance. Now, the reason this type of grid is commonly referred to as the baseline grid is because it's used on typography very, very well. I've done a lot of other videos about this, but if you establish your typography to work off of your baseline grid, that means that all of our typography, the baseline of our type is gonna line up on that grid. You can see this is a great way to establish vertical rhythm throughout your designs. When things sit on the baseline, now we're actually measuring from baseline to baseline. No longer are we taking into account the bounding boxes in any particular design tool. Now the baseline grid is also great for laying out things like icon design. You can see here we have a 24 by 24 pixel icon. Now in this method, we can get really pixel perfect with our vector art or our iconography. So this eight pixel grid, this baseline grid is great for layout. It's great for typography. It's great for iconography. Now you can see the use of grids playing out in some more practical scenarios. I can turn my grid on and off, control G. You can see the grids are applied to each one of these examples. In the first case, we have the ability to distribute elements evenly. So we have maybe a toggle switch. When I click on it, I can actually stretch those out and they are evenly distributed. The same thing goes here for our three toggle option or our segment to control. And we also have bottom tab bar navigations. When we utilize this idea of responsive grids, what we're really doing is creating responsive navigation and responsive elements inside of our design. You see another great example down here with this Twitter-esque or social media card. We have a bunch of information inside and we have a grid applied to that bottom navigation of icons there, a little control panel of iconography. Great, we're getting consistent spacing inside of our design, which is really, really nice. To finish everything off, I wanna show you a few tips and tricks when it comes to grids. Now, when we're inside of our grids, again, we already talked about this one, but make sure you know the hotkey to turn your grids on or off. Now, you can also copy and paste your grids from artboard to artboard. I'll select my first artboard and I'll select over here on the left-hand side of my layout grid and I'll hit Command or Control C, depending on your operating system. I'll come over to my new artboard and Command or Control V We've gone ahead and pasted that grid in to have consistency. If you want even more consistency, consider creating styles out of your grids. With the artboard selected, I can head over to my layout grid here and open up my styles and I can create a new style. Let's call this mobile columns and make sure we spell that right and go ahead and save it. And now we have that style that can be applied to any of our other grids we have here. Mobile columns, boom, and now we have that consistency across the board. Well, that's a wrap on advanced grids. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments, and if you haven't done it yet, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out.
Make sure you check the description down below for a bunch of helpful links to resources where you can learn more about advanced techniques using grids. Hope you're having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things, and mastering the grids until you are the grid master. See you in the next one.